All right. Hello, live on Facebook once again. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Jones, and we'll let everyone uh, kind of click on and, and join us live really quickly. Uh, this is, once again, we're going to do another chat with uh, Bentonville School Superintendent, Dr. Debbie Jones, to chat with her a little bit about uh, the upcoming school year and some of the things to expect. I know parents have big decisions to make coming up. Um, and I also wanted to preface this by saying um, this is part of DBI and Downtown Bentonville's initiative. I know you're watching this on the DBI Facebook page. Uh, part of having a strong community is having strong leadership that's transparent and is open to answering questions. So Dr. Jones, we thank you for joining us again today and being uh, generous with your time and also for answering a lot of our questions this morning. Well, thank you, Dana, and thank you to DBI because, you know, I just appreciate the voice and getting to connect with parents in the community and uh, just trying to give them as much information as we possibly can about opening for school. Sure. So let's start with, you know, the most recent update. There was an email that went out yesterday evening. Tell us a little bit about what that told parents and what they can expect in the coming weeks uh, with that mask initiative. Okay, simply put, this is a recommendation uh, from administration that will go through our task force, which is heavily medical, uh, mental health care, uh, parent, we have a good representation on that task force. We will send this recommendation through the task force this Friday and then we'll get their input. We'll take their input and the recommendation to the school board meeting on the 21st. And our recommendation is this, that face coverings be required for students K through 12 when social distancing is not possible. And we know that that's not gonna be possible on school buses. And so that's wearing a face mask the entire time from the time you get on to the time you get off. Um, we are going to make every effort to spread the rooms out to give kids distancing and um, where distancing permits at the teacher's discretion, the kids won't have to wear those face masks or they can take them down. Um, when they're passing, especially junior highs and high school kids, when they're passing in the halls, um, we can't protect. We don't. We can't provide the social distancing needed, and those kids will need to pull their face mask up to pass in the halls. And so, I hope that parents understand. We all have to wear a face mask. We all experience that, and it's a challenge, and it's uncomfortable for all of us. And we do recognize that it's going to be difficult for children. Um, and so we will intentionally build in face mask breaks throughout the day. We don't want to be militant about the process. We want to be safe and we want to protect our students. But really, this is a bigger issue about the staff. Um, the staff, the older um, adults are more at risk with this particular disease. and. If our staff, if our teachers don't show up to teach, then our kids can't learn at the level that they need to. We have data to show when teachers are out. We have to have them to be successful at this. And so this is as much for their protection as anyone. Um, and, you know, and I have seen even this weekend, I saw a little three or four year old girl um, at local law and she was wearing her little kitty uh, face mask did it beautifully. And I know that if we approach this in a positive way and we make it fun for kids and, and if parents will purchase face masks that their kids will be proud or happy to wear or they'll enjoy doing that, it's going to go a lot easier on the teachers and on the schools. And again, why are we doing this now? Because um, it felt that we had uh, required it first, then we had strongly recommended and now we're back to required. And it's because we have followed the guidance as it has changed. And when the governor came out last week and said uh, the requirement for face mask will be left up to the school boards, then it put us in a whole different direction because the actual uh, guidance from the Department of Health right now says that all um, and it's posted as our latest posting says the general public should wear face coverings in all indoor environments. And then it goes on, but it specifically names schools. And so we're following 
um, science data and recommendations on this. And it's shifting. And so you guys, there is a process in enacting these kind of uh, requirements or suggestions. So this is a process, the school board votes on the 21st, um, and then we'll kind of go from there, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. Uh, all of that process all along. Um, and, you know, as, as this disease or this virus changes, we have to be prepared to be flexible and follow the latest guidance. Um, so the big decision tomorrow for parents, that decision needs to be virtual or blended. They have to make that decision by the end of the day on July 8th. That's tomorrow. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about when parents make that decision, what are those next steps? And so let's start with the blended learners. What's that next step once they make that decision? Okay, once the parent makes the decision, starting on July 9th, that's when the heavy duty work begins on our end. And I know I've had the question, when will we get confirmation? Your last request that you entered in the same survey is where you're scheduled. It's not, you're not going to get confirmation immediately. You can assume the very last dated entry you made, that's where you're going to be scheduled. Okay. And you have a reserved place at that time. Then we go to the drawing boards. Our principals are coming back on contract and we start creating rosters and building everything around that. And the work is enormous at that point because we start looking at classroom and spacing and passing and everything, loading and unloading. Um, and so you will hear after that from your school principals as you typically do. Um, a lot of the communication, once we get the big district pieces, um, communicate it out and that's on our task force website and the parents will continually get emails from me but you'll see that principals will start taking over to begin communicating with their families um, because then you are uh, you're, you're registered for a school those that select the virtual school while your name still remains on the roster you're not going to lose your position there if you go back at semester or if you go back um, at the following year. Um, but you will become a virtual school student. And that may mean that you don't have a teacher that's in your zone school. Um, and it may be a totally different teacher that's a virtual teacher that teaches fifth graders across the district and so forth. If you re choose to return at semester, then uh, we will guarantee you a place, but we can't guarantee it back within possibly your zone school. The next year when you come back, you're going to go back to your zone school. Now, there are exceptions, and I want to be clear about this. Willowbrook, we know, is already over kindergarten. Some of those kids would have to be moved to another school if we started now. And so um, those kids were accepting all as Willowbrook if we have a lot virtual and homeschool will be able to accommodate them. Um, but when they come back in first grade, that might be a different story because still they're over. So really quickly, we've had some questions here and, and we've defined this in the past. Blended is your physical attending school with the safety guidelines and protocols in place. So when they say define blended, that's what we're talking about is. It, it is traditional school, but it's mm -hmm. also ready to uh, transition if we have crisis. If I have to close a school because we have an outbreak, they're ready to do that. But it, think of that blended as traditional school with all of the safety efforts. Okay, so then we talk about the virtual learners. Um, and there's been a lot of questions from parents, and I know we covered this in the past. What if we choose blended and then we want to change our mind? They're, once they lock in on the 8th, you all are doing so much work behind the scenes. There's not a lot of room for adjustment, correct? Correct. We always try to accommodate parents the best we can, and uh, we will continue to try to do that. But once you've made your decision, we're placing teachers. And if you change your mind midstream, we can't guarantee that there's going to be a seat 
in that opposite place. And so that's why we have to be um, pretty rigid about this particular issue. Sure. All right. So let's talk about virtual learners. So on the 8th, if you as a parent decide that your child is going to learn virtually for the semester, what does that look like for next steps for the parent and the child? Okay. So if you are a virtual student, you think back to the spring, it will look a lot like what the spring experience was. Um, we have been very transparent in saying if you have a younger student and you're going virtual, you have to have lots of involvement. You have to kind of be a second teacher with your own child. Some people love that and are very successful with that. Most people do not. <laughs> um, it's a heavy, I know, <laughs> I'm sending my kid to school. Um, uh, it is, it's a heavy lift. We're, we're very transparent about that. There, everyone is not designed to be a virtual student. If they're independent, they uh, have great time management, um, they have initiative, they're probably going to be okay but you still have to have lots of parent support. You will hear back from, we have virtual school administrators and you'll get communication back from them. Just be patient. Everyone is going to get what they registered for and you will get communication. Okay, so that's kind of the, the difference between blended and virtual that we discussed in our first conversation. And now we know once you make that decision tomorrow, those are your next steps. Um, so we did have some parent questions about uh, a lot of questions about the protocol for a positive um, COVID test and what those triggers are within the school system as they're trying to make their decisions tomorrow. They want to know what those guidelines are. And I know you get a lot of that uh, guidance from the Arkansas Department of Health and the CDC. So do you know more from our last conversation on um, what those triggers are, what those protocols will be? Um, we want to know more on that as well. And we have written and submitted questions to get some direction. What do we do if we have one case? What's our typical protocol? We have not been given that and we don't have the right to develop that. Right now, when we have a case or a suspected case, then typically we get a call from the Department of Health and they say, we and and sometimes we're not given the name at all um, and they are the ones that are responsible for contacting the people when they do contact tracing for whom they've had direct contact but it varies sometimes in their direction because it varies by case there are so many different um, um, situations in dealing with different cases and so right now we are subject to whatever the Department of Health tells us to do. And um, we are seeking um, greater strategy so that we can move forward if we have one case so that we can assist the health department and know what we're gonna communicate with our families. So right now we don't have an answer to that, but we have asked that question, when do I think I'm going to get it? I hear that Desi is working on a plan, that's our, Department of Education, um, and that we might hear more this coming week. Okay. And you, of course, communicate with that with parents as soon as you hear it. As soon as I get that information, keep checking your email because I'll give you a heads up on a big item like that through email, and then we'll post it to our website. Okay. So there were, again, around the health monitoring. Uh, parents were curious when they send their child to school, is it their responsibility to temperature check? Will the child be checked as they're going into school? Can you kind of remind us of what that protocol is? It is. And this is under the guidance of the Department of Education and the Health. Parents are responsible for checking the temperature of each of their children every single day before they put them on a bus, before they ever enter the school, as in all cases, whether it's the flu or whether it's just illness and not to send the children to school if they have a temp. Um, and that guidance is also on our website. Um, there's no longer restriction or quarantine for traveling um, outside of, to, to the other places in the state. And that was updated on the Department of Health as well. Um, and so uh, it is a parent responsibility 
it does require that we have trust in parents and that everyone do their part to protect the whole school community. Now, if, for example, a teacher fears that someone's not feeling well in their class, as always, then they will send them to the nurse's office and we can check the temp and follow up with the parent there. And we will do that. We'll be a, um, especially uh, show extra precaution during this time. Um, so we've had a question about, and I know you covered this a little bit ago with our mass conversation, but the, the high school kids uh, navigating their day between classrooms um, and the, you know, if the mask regulations are in place, then they'll have a mask on their face. Are there other things you suggest, the hand washing? The parent question is how will high school kids safely navigate their day with passing periods, et cetera? So let's okay. just speak to that a little bit. Absolutely, hand hygiene, washing hands frequently. We will have sanitizer throughout the school. Um, at the entryway of every door, at the entryway of every bus, um, you'll have hand sanitizer, trash can. Every time uh, you blow your nose, automatically clean your hands. A lot of that training, just retraining all of our families within our families to try to do that before we come to school. But then the teachers have extra training that they're going to share with their students as well. Face coverings. If they're passing in the hall, they need to be wearing face coverings. And um, I feel pretty strong that the board's going to support that. Um, and physical distancing, absolutely, where possible. We're going to do our very best to work on the facilities, room arrangement, and spread desks out, have them face the same way, where we may have taken up some space before with learning centers and all that. We're going to have to really kind of watch our arrangements within our rooms uh, just to provide as much physical distancing as possible and um, just watch health, watch the temperature of your children and get tested um, if there are any symptoms or fever, or, um, meet with your physician. Uh, and Vanessa has a comment on here. I'm just going to call it out. I see it, Vanessa. Wash the child's mask every night. So that's another good ritual you can get in place now, maybe, where you uh, get that mask. You make sure to wash it, hang dry it, because that'll be important as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Buy a whole stack of fabric masks and get into the habit, just laying them out with a clothes, a different mask every day and putting them in the laundry. I'm as guilty as anyone. I looked at my uh, 10th graders football, the little mask he's wearing for football practice now. And they don't wear that when they're actually in physical activity, but all in between. And I thought it was so filthy. I thought this needs to be washed. And so that's a good reminder. Thank you. Uh, and Andrew over here just asked, will masks be available at school? Or is this something that they need to make, make sure they send with their child every day? Parents and staff both. Um, all masks are not going to fit you perfectly. You have to get the right fit. It's just like picking out anything else for school on school supplies. Get something that the child already is comfortable wearing. Um, and I, I have my favorites now, too. But uh, please provide a host stack of them. We do have backups. We have ordered PPE um, and we'll have those available. And when there are, they don't have them, we'll be asking them to put on replacements. But they're boring. Plain old, the little paper mask and, and kids won't be as anxious to wear those, I'm sure. No, I understand. Um, we have a lot of questions around uh, a lot of the um, extracurricular things or even the specials that the kids do. So um, PE, music, the Trek Gifted and Talented program, even eating in the cafeteria. So all of those things that are not the primary goals of school, you know, they're primary learning, but they're supplementary parts of school. How do we navigate some of those in the school system? Okay, let me try to cover as much as I can. I threw a lot of them at you. Yeah, um, there are so many, and we have really specific guidance that was updated yesterday on our fact sheet with all of that, okay? So in your elementary schools, all your music, your art, your PE, they're still having that with safety precautions, okay? Um, if you're in a AAA activity, and we're talking about choir and band and football and all that, then even if you're virtual, 
you have to come to school for that one particular period to participate. And that is a AAA rule in order to be eligible for catastrophic insurance. Okay. Um, so for the others, look, look more closely at the guidance that's because there's more specific information there. Eating in the cafeteria. We are, because we're limiting capacity um, within our cafeterias, some classes will have a combination. Some days they'll eat in their classroom, other days they'll eat in the cafeteria. But children will not be in a situation where they eat in their, in their classroom every single day. And so that they have a combination of both and teachers can kind of share that. But that will be assigned at the school level. Okay, um, activities going on right now. Yes, we're having football practice. Are we going to have football games? I don't know. We're, you're, you will know the guidance as soon as I do because it will be out on Twitter as soon as they make any announcements on that. So we're just optimistic. I think that if we have a chance to have a normal school year, to stay in school, and I think we really do if we – practice these precautions, wear face masks, wash our hands. I think that's really helpful in trying to stay well. Did I miss anything that I needed to address there? Band, band and orchestra. A uh, band is a really big challenge because of blowing the instruments and, um, and spreading the disease. Uh, right now we're waiting on further guidance from the Department of Health on that we will find a way to make that work somehow. Even if it, in worst case scenario, they're playing outside distance from each other. Um, but uh, right now we're waiting on further guidance. Did I lose you? I'm back. Okay, I see. <laughs> All right, I'll stop for a second. So we were talking, uh, and I don't know if you could hear this this question or not. Uh, we had some questions on food allergies, and we had touched on that the last conversation as well. Um, have you have any updates on that? I do, and the specifics are posted on our website. But we will, and we're very careful about that. We do have students with food allergies hat will eat in the cafeteria. And they have a reserved place in the cafeteria to do that daily. Um, and then within their classroom, there will be desks designated, cleaned, that where kids never eat on that. Although after kids eat in the classroom, they, the desks will be cleaned. And so um, more details available on our website about that as well. So we're going to share the link to the Q&A on your website because it is constantly updating um, and I'll share that at the bottom of this interview chat and we'll blast that out as well. Um, if you've posted a question on the side here, I'll paste these and send these to you and Leslie and make sure you've seen all of them. So you have the opportunity to answer them on the website as well. We just can't cover all of them in our 30 minutes here. Um, is there anything I miss that you want to communicate with parents right now? Well, we do. We'll revisit those questions and we'll continue to update our website. Um, I will communicate um, as soon as we have an announcement from the school board. Uh, the task force will weigh in on this on Friday and I will go ahead and send parents an updated email this Friday on the task force recommendation so that they will be in the know on that and then you know, we look forward to the response from parents on uh, choosing your selection. I will say this, um, we respect your choice on what you do. Nothing beats face-to-face -face education. Um, it's the highest quality, the highest form, and we'll do everything we can uh, to make that as safe as possible for students and staff. And uh, we will continue to try to keep you as informed as we can. We will be diving in on the work on July 9th and um, start working heavily with our teachers. And there's so much more work to be done and getting teacher input and the details. And so um, you will see some of the parent communication lighten up just a little bit. And it's because we're trying to focus on opening schools. All right, we will replay this. You can replay this interview on Facebook. We're gonna put it on Instagram TV, on our DWTN media website as well. Um, 
just keep an eye on that Q and A page because you guys do a fantastic job of updating it. And I encourage parents. There's so many layers to these decisions, and scrolling through that will help. And so. yes, Leslie Rott, my communications director, has done a beautiful job of trying to organize them and make them as accessible as possible. So I have an amazing team. Yes, very much so. Thank you, Leslie, as well. We appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Jones, and good luck to parents. Stay safe. Thank you for this time, and we'll replay this if you need it again. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Jones. Bye. Bye-bye. Right,